And we're back here on Open and glad to have you sharing with us as we continue to uh, bring you the news, the information, the things that you need to know uh, during this time. And one of the things that we are taking a look at here at Open is how colleges and universities are being affected, particularly through the COVID-19 pandemic. You heard earlier from our Lehman College president, but now we want to shift and go down to Bronx Community College where we can get a better idea as how students are actually navigating through this uh, COVID pandemic. Our guest right now joining us is Dr. I Irene Delgado. Uh, she is the Vice President for Student Success at Bronx Community College, and she's our guest here on Open. Uh, Dr. Delgado, good to have you sharing with us here on Open. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you for this opportunity to speak about Bronx Community College, which is under the wonderful leadership of Chancellor Felix Matos and our president, Thomas Sekenegbi. Their commitment to the BCC students has never been greater. Yeah. Well, talk to us about, you know, BCC right now, navigating through this tough time. Uh, a lot of students, you know, still trying to get acclimated. And it's hard to say, like, we've been in this for a minute, but I know that even for students, as well as faculty, there's this great, you know, trying to get acclimated. So talk to us about uh, where you are and, and, and how do you see things? Well, it's uh, very murky. Uh, uncharted territory is everybody's favorite word. But I can tell you that the first thing I know about the Bronx students is that how resilient they are as are our faculty, as are our staff. So the first thing that when this happened in a matter of six days, we moved 90% of our classes to an online format. That's unheard of, unprecedented. Our faculty were like, okay, we got this. And then we were like, great, but how do we get our students? So the first thing we started to do was to canvas our students and say, well, we're moving to an online format. What do you need? Immediately, there was a rally cry to students saying, I don't have a laptop. I don't have a um, connection to um, an electronic device, or I have some at home, but now I'm sharing it with my mom and my dad and my little brother because now everybody needs a laptop. So, you know, again, thanks. You always have to say thank you and have gratitude. Thanks to the BCC Foundation and the assembly members, Natalia Hernandez and Victor Pichardo, we were able to get funds immediately together along with CUNY supporting us to put laptops, either Chromebooks or iPads into students' hands so they could immediately get in on the action. And by the way, we had them delivered to their homes. And the very beginning when this whole thing started, we were having them come on campus, but as the progression of COVID happened, we realized for their safety and the safety of our staff, let's mail them to their homes. And that has gone very successfully. To date, we have put over 900 devices in students' hands. And as we um, continue to get uh, requests, we will send them out. The next hurdle that we're dealing with in terms of technology, though, and we've been very fortunate, is that Wi-Fi companies have been willing to expand and lift data caps, expand, you know, um, giving free Wi-Fi. I think that will be a challenge for us in terms of how are we going to navigate for the full should we end up in the same environment. We want to make sure that our students will have access to all the Wi-Fi that they're going to need. So we are already hedging our bets and looking at that to make sure that we can provide that for the students who don't have. Yeah. I think the other challenge that some students are having, as well as myself, I don't consider myself to be the most techie person on the planet. So when someone said to me, oh, well, you need to download Zooms and you need to download WebEx, and I'm sitting there going, huh? Yeah. The beauty of BCC is that we have live support for our students that they could call or if they're savvy enough to how to work, know to work the website to have someone walk them through how to download the technology, how to work on these distance education platforms. Along with that is the subject matter support. Students who are very tech savvy, because let's face it, everyone has an iPhone and probably students are more tech savvy than me or you, please forgive me. <laughs> You know, um, the challenge then because becomes, well, I'm still struggling in calculus, whether I'm sitting in the classroom taking calculus or algebra or accounting, um, I'm now at home struggling. And we immediately set up live tutoring. Students can schedule an appointment and see their tutor live on their screen, helping them walk through the problems. And I think that takes a huge load off our students knowing that they have that resource available. That just because we are not on campus, we are all online. And the objective is to keep them on track. 
Well, talk to us about students who may be having that challenge, right? Because I've talked uh, previously uh, with Lehman College and they've talked about the credit, no credit policy. Uh, obviously for BCC students, I believe the same policy is also available. Yes, the college, no, uh, the credit, no credit policy was uh, designed at CUNY uh, Central, which now means that it applies to all the CUNY campuses. So if a student, let's say, is struggling and they know that this is not their best work, despite the resources that we have for them, they can say, you know what, I don't want to have to take a D and bring that my average down. Students will have 20 days after the first day of grades being posted to, to decide whether or not that one class or all their classes can go to a credit, no credit environment. What does that mean? It means that instead of getting a D, they will get credit for the course and their GPA will not be affected. And that's a huge win for our students. And it will not impact their uh, rate of progress in terms of financial aid, because financial aid is critical to our students, which is another thing I wanna talk about. All our offices are working remotely. So our students can pick up the phone, leave a message on the financial aid line, and a financial aid advisor will call them back to walk them through their FAFSA form, to walk them through if they've been selected for verification, how to upload the documents that they need so they don't end up with a big bill on top of all of this. And so when we talk about that bill, obviously a lot of students are concerned about, you know, paying that bill and, and navigating. But certainly for BCC students, um, an opportunity to uh, tap into some distance learning. Uh, and as everybody's doing some navigating, I think you and I are a great testimony that, uh, you know, we just got to make the adjustments. You just have to make the adjustments. I think students need to be patient as well as our faculty and our staff. And I think the world as a whole, this is a whole new environment for everybody. And when you are faced with the unknown, people get scared, people get anxious, people get stressed. Are they going to have a job? Where are their finances? You know, just going out to get your basic necessity is now becoming a challenge. One of the other support services that we are giving to our students is that all our offices for personal counseling are working remotely. Then again, another great thing about the new generation, there isn't as much stigma about going to speak to a therapist. You know, I know our generation, oh, that would be the end of the world. Our students are so much more resilient than that and don't carry that stigma. So our students can call, leave a message, and a mental health counselor will call them back. It's free, it's confidential, and it's to talk to a professional to how do you deal with all of the stress of so much unknown and being at home and knowing that your parents are stressed or if our student is the adult and they have children, how are they managing all these things? So these are all the layers. It's a very holistic approach to making sure our students rise above and get across that stage, which for us, you know, we graduate over 2000 students every May. Um, unfortunately, we will not at this moment be having a ceremony in May the way we typically right. do crossing the stage. We are only postponing that. And that's something that I want to reassure the students. Their big day of wearing that robe and their cords and their mortarboard will be coming. In the interim, we are going to do uh, electronic celebration. We want to comm commemorate this in some way. So we're working on a virtual yearbook with every student and their name and what their major is. We're reaching out to those students so they can send us fun pictures and um, quotes. So we don't want it to go unmarked for the moment, but down the road, we will for sure be having a commencement because that you know, I know as a first generation Latina walking across that stage made my parents so proud. These students have people who have been rooting for them and their network, and they deserve that big day. When that big day is going to happen, we're not sure yet. Yeah, that all so, depends on, on, so, on the safety and security. So trying of to figure it out. Yeah. But it will happen, and I don't want students to get disillusioned. Well, no, Dr. Val, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Certainly, we're going to take a look at BCC and see how you guys continue to navigate through this process. But it's good to hear uh, that students are really tapped in and making the adjustment. We'll continue to make the adjustment. Great having you. And uh, thanks for being with us here on Open. Thank you. Be safe, awesome. everybody. Thank you. And listen, we want you to stay connected to us here on Open. We're taking a quick break. We've got more show. We're coming right back right after this. <laughs> 